If I had a nickel for every distributor that said, hey, what's the best gross margin percent distrib distribution business you've ever seen? Hey, what's a good gross margin percent? Hey, Bruce, I've heard you can't make money on anything less than 18% out of the warehouse. You know, it's just this, this big obsession with gross margin percent. So I want to look at that, unpack it a little bit, because it's a big traditional belief uh, that's got some blind spots to it. I think that starting off, it's, 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 it's just logic. It's true that if we could just raise our prices 1% and sustainably keep all of our business, customer says, fine, and we just keep our business, and nothing else changes. Good economic, uh, seratus paribus, all things being equal. If nothing else changes, then that extra margin would flow pretty much, except for maybe commissions to salespeople, right to the bottom line. Because nobody has any more activity. There's no more incremental cost to serve. We're just processing exactly the same scenario of stuff. It's just there's a little bit more gross margin dollar content in what we're doing. So that's brilliant. So by saying, OK, higher margin percent is better, we then make the false leap to, therefore, anything with high margin percent is better. No. Because an account has a high margin percent doesn't mean that they have high margin dollars per transaction that exceed their cost of serve dollars. Not at all. But that's what we do. So there, there isn't a correlation between margin percent of account of an item of a, of a, of a territory, uh, of a branch, and the, and the, and the bottom line. There, 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 and there just isn't one. So when we look at gross margin percent um, and start to have a bias and think that, hey, it's got high margin on it is good. So that means the small pick items where, where they're, you know, we sell them for 50 cents, we buy them for 10 cents, and maybe, maybe that line from that supplier turns four or five times a year. So the, the Gimroy, the gross margin per return on invested dollar, or the turn earn looks fantastic. It's not looking at another dimension, which is the value equation of gross margin dollar for the cost to serve dollar as in there's profit, because it's a disaster. Same with high margin percent house accounts. Yes, the margin's high, but when you look at the value exchange equation, it doesn't work. So because we have these, these biases, you know, folk on, on margin percent, uh, we tend to probably overprice a lot of direct ship orders because, gee, we don't want to be too, too low there. Fortunately, all of our competitors do too. So we win these things and make a lot of money on them. Whereas on the high natural margin stuff, house accounts, that we, nobody cuts the price of the stuff. It's just, it's just there. But we tolerate it. We don't, we don't even bother inspecting. We just say, God, thank God we got that. That's pretty good. Maybe sometimes we even aggressively go after more of that business, not realizing perversely it's, it's causing us more cost to serve dollars than margin dollars, and we're, we're, sales are going up and our profits are going south. So that's a little bit of a, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a backdrop. Now, given that, let's talk about, well, why don't we just continue to sneak up prices? Because you did say, Bruce, at the beginning of the lesson, all things being equal, if we can just raise the prices 1% sustainably, then that flows through the bottom line, and that is powerful. So why don't we do that? And by all means, there are some pros as well as some cons of doing that, which we'll look at in the next lesson.